Good morning, Dust, and welcome to day two of Unit 5. So we're on Lesson 2 today, and we just wanted to think about what happened on yesterday when we were reading. So yesterday we were talking about the adventures and how we're going to explore our characters' adventures. But we also took a look at how we can use the text to predict or to tell what's going to happen next in the story. So first all we did was just look at the cover of the book. Remember, we did this book on yesterday, The Three Little Wolves and the Big Bad Pig. We looked at the back cover, which gave us a little more information. But then we used not just the cover, but we used something else called our schema. And we looked at our, we used our schema to figure out what we already knew and then we decided we could use that information to predict or tell us what might happen next in the story. So today, we want to think about what's happening in this text itself and use that information to determine or predict what might happen next. So, we're actually going to read the story together today. The Three Little Wolves and the Big Bad Pig. Once upon a time, there were three cuddly little wolves with soft fur and fluffy tails who lived with their mother. The first was black, the second was gray, and the third was white. One day, the mother called the three little wolves around her and said, My children, it is time for you to go into the world. Go and build a house for yourselves, but beware of the big bad pig. Don't worry, mother. We will watch out for him, said the three little wolves, and they set off. Soon, they met a kangaroo who was pushing a wheelbarrow full of red and yellow bricks. Please, will you give us some of your bricks, asked the three little wolves. Certainly, said the kangaroo, as she gave lots of red and yellow bricks. So the three little wolves built themselves a house of bricks. Now, I know we're using this text to talk about what's going to happen next and make that prediction. But I sure am thinking a lot about another story that we know. And oddly enough, they were building houses as well. Let's read more. Did you see the page? All right. The very next day, the big bad pig came prowling down the road and saw the house of bricks that the little wolves had built. The three little wolves were playing croquet in the garden. When they saw the big bad pig coming, they ran inside the house and locked the door. The pig knocked on the door and grunted, Little wolves, little wolves, let me come in. No, 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 said the three little wolves, not by the hair of our chinny chin chins. We will not let you in, not for all the tea leaves in our china teapot. Hmm. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down, said the pig. So he huffed and he puffed and he puffed and he huffed, but the house didn't fall. Now, that's interesting because I am thinking about and making a connection to the other story we were thinking about, the three little pigs and the big bad wolf. And I thought, hmm, I thought that they didn't build the brick house until the end of the story. But this story begins with the, with the wolves building a brick house. So now I'm wondering, What's going to happen next? I know in the other story, the wolf blew down all of the pig's houses. And I know that when he got to the brick house, he couldn't blow it down. I wonder what's going to happen in this story. They built a brick house first and the pig is trying to blow it down. Go ahead and tell someone around you right now, what do you think is going to happen next? Ready? Let's find out. 
But the pig wasn't called big and bad for nothing. He went and fetched his sledgehammer and he knocked the house down. The three little wolves only just managed to escape before the bricks crumbled and they were and they were very frightened indeed. So, did he knock the house down? Yes, he did. How many of you thought that was going to happen? Thumbs up if you thought that was going to happen. <laughs> How many of you thought something else was going to happen? Okay, let's keep reading. <laughs> we shall have to build a stronger house, they said. Just then, they saw a beaver who was mixing concrete in a concrete mixer. And concrete, if you know, it's the same kind of material that they use to make the sidewalks that we walk on every day. So it's a pretty strong material. Please, will you give us some of your concrete? Asked the three little wolves. Certainly, said the beaver. And the beaver gave them buckets and buckets full of messy, slurry concrete. So the three little wolves built themselves a house of concrete. No sooner had they finished than the big bad pig came prowling down the road and saw the house of concrete that the little wolves had built. They were playing battle, battle door and shuttlecock in the garden. And when they saw the big bad pig coming, they ran inside their house and shut the door. Sounds smart to me. The pig rang, rang the bell and said, Little frightened wolves, let me come in. No, 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 said the three little wolves. By the hair of our chinny chin chins, we will not let you in. Not for all the tea leaves in our china teapot. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down, said the pig. So he huffed and he puffed and he puffed and he huffed. But the house didn't fall down. What do you think is going to happen next? He huffed and puffed, but the house didn't fall down. What do you think he will do? Will he try something else? Will he give up? Are the pigs, I mean, are the wolves finally safe at last? What do you think will happen next? So now we're going to use what we've already learned in the story to figure out what might happen in this part of the story. So in the first part, the pig huffed and puffed, and the house did not fall down. So what did he do? He went and got a sledgehammer. So now I'm thinking, what might he do this time? Because he huffed and puffed, and the concrete house is not falling down. Will he use something else? Will he give up? Are the, are the uh, wolves safe? Let's find out. That you have your prediction in your head as to what you think is going to happen? Let's see. But the pig wasn't called big and bad for nothing. He went and fetched his pneumatic drill and smashed the house down. The three little wolves managed to escape, but their chinny chin chins were trembling and trembling and trembling. Have you seen construction workers use a tool that looks like that? Some call it a jackhammer. Mm -hmm. And it's really powerful, powerful enough to break through concrete. And maybe you've even seen some workers taking up the old sidewalk on the street and putting down a new one. So it's strong enough to go through concrete. Yikes, poor little wolves. I wonder what happened next. Do you think the wolves will build a new house? What could they possibly use to build a new house? If bricks weren't strong enough and concrete wasn't strong enough, could they even find another material stronger to make a house? Or will they give up? I wonder what'll happen. Let's see. We shall build an even stronger house, they said, because they were very determined. Just then, they saw a truck coming along the road carrying barbed wire. Iron bars, armor plates, and heavy metal padlocks. Now, barbed wire is it the, the tough wire that you see with little spikes, little pokey things sticking off of it? That's barbed wire. Hmm. 
Please, will you give us some of your barbed wire, a few iron bars and armor plates, and some heavy metal padlocks? And those are big, heavy locks that you have to use a giant key with to open. They said to the rhinoceros who was driving the truck, Sure, said the rhinoceros, and he gave them plenty of barbed wire, iron bars, armor plates, and heavy metal padlocks. He also gave them some plexiglass and some reinforced steel chains because he was a generous and kind-hearted rhinoceros. So plexiglass is really strong glass. It looks just like glass, but it's made of a different material, and it's really, really hard to break. Mm. So the three little wolves built themselves an extremely strong house. It was the most strongest, securest house one could possibly imagine. They felt absolutely safe. Hmm. Look at their construction. What do you think is going to happen next? I'm thinking Every time they build a house, here comes the big bad pig trying to knock it down and get to the little wolves. So I'm thinking that might happen again. The next day, the big bad pig came prowling along the road as usual. The three little wolves were playing hopscotch in the garden. When they saw the big bad pig coming, they ran inside their house, bolted the door, and locked all the 37 padlocks. The pig dialed the video entrance phone and said, Little frightened wolves with the trembling chins, let me come in. No, 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 said the little wolves. By the hair of our chinny chin chance, we will not let you in. Not for all the tea leaves in our china teapot. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down, said the pig. So he huffed and he puffed and he puffed and he huffed. But the house didn't fall down. Now, that's happened every time, hasn't it? He's huffed and puffed just like the big bad wolf in the other story, but the house didn't fall down. What will happen this time? Hmm. But the pig, oh, so the, he huffed and he puffed and he puffed and he huffed, but the house didn't fall down. But the pig wasn't called big and bad for nothing. What could he possibly use? So let's think about this. Let's predict what the pig might use if he's going to try to get this house down. He has used a jackhammer, he's used a sledgehammer, and now this house is extra strong. What could he possibly use to take it down? Or will he not take it down at all? I remember the old story of the three little pigs, that they had a house of straw, a house of sticks, and then a brick house, and the third house didn't come down at all. I wonder what's going to happen now. If I follow the text, I'm thinking he still might try something else. What are you predicting? Hmm. Well, let's find out. Mm -mm. But the pig wasn't called big and bad for nothing. He brought some dynamite, laid it against the house, lit the fuse, and... You know that what dynamite is? They use it a lot of times in mining and in caves when they want to blow something up and blast it to pieces. Let's find out. The house blew up. See him right there? <laughs> Let's see over here. Wow. He is a big bad pig, isn't he? Hmm. I wonder what's going to happen now. All along the story, I am using my strategy of predicting to help me think about what's going to happen next. But I'm not just predicting wildly out of my imagination. I am following what's happening in the story to help me think about what the next thing might be that occurs. I know in the beginning, he huffed and puffed. So all through the story, I expect him to try the same thing, that huffing and puffing. Then I noticed that huffing and puffing didn't work, so he tried something really strong or much stronger to take down the house. And that's been happening throughout the story. Each time, he's using something more powerful to take down the stronger and stronger houses. Let's find out what happens next. 
do you think is going to happen next? Something must be wrong with our building materials, they said. We have to try something different, but what? At that moment, they saw a flamingo coming. A, coming along, excuse me, pushing a wheelbarrow full of flowers. Flowers. Please, will you give us some flowers, asked the little wolves. Wait a minute. Flowers? Now, so far we've seen them use these materials, and these materials have been very strong. Do you think that flowers could be a strong material? Why would they ask such a thing? With pleasure, said the flamingo, as he gave them lots of flowers. So the three little wolves built themselves a house of flowers. How on earth is a house of flowers going to stop a big bad pig that can blow up concrete and jackhammer and use a sledgehammer and take down all these strong materials. How is a house of flowers going to make a difference? One wall was made of marigolds, one of daffodils, one of pink roses, and one of cherry blossoms. The ceiling was made of sunflowers and the floor was a carpet of daisies. Hmm, doesn't sound too strong. They had water lilies in their bathtub and buttercups in their refrigerator. It was a rather fragile house and it swayed in the wind, but it was very beautiful. So fragile means it was very delicate, not very strong at all. Next day, the big bad pig came prowling down the road and saw the house of flowers that the three little wolves had built. He rang the blue bell at the door and said, Little frightened wolves with the trembling chins and the scorched tails, let me come in. No, 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 said the three little wolves. By the hair of our chinny chin chins, we will not let you in, not for all the tea leaves in our china pot. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down, said the pig. What on earth do you think is going to happen? Now, here I'm making connections. I know in the story of the three little pigs and the big bad, big bad wolf, what happens. I know what happens, what has happened so far in this story. And every time he tries to blow it down, it doesn't work. But this time, they have this weak little house made of flowers. Quickly tell somebody beside you what you think is going to happen. Mm. Have your prediction ready? Here we go. But as he took a deep breath, ready to huff and puff, he smelled the soft scent of the flowers. It was fantastic. And because the scent was so lovely, the pig took another breath and then another. Instead of huffing and puffing, he began to sniff. He sniffed deeper and deeper until he was quite filled with the fragrant scent. His heart grew tender and he realized how horrible he had been. Right then, he decided to become a big, good pig. He started to sing and to dance the Tarantella. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> At first, the three wolves were a bit worried. It might be a trick. But soon they realized that the pig had truly changed. So they came running out of the house. They started playing games with him. First, they played pig pong and then piggy in the middle. And when they were all tired, they invited him into the house. Now, did anyone predict that was going to happen? Sometimes stories will take a big turn at the end and sometimes our predictions will be correct and sometimes they will throw a big surprise at us. They offered him tea and strawberries 
and wolfberries and asked him to stay with them as long as he wanted. The pig accepted and they all lived happily together ever. Happily together after. <laughs> hey, now, this is certainly not what happened in the story of the three little pigs and the big bad wolf. But that making a connection with that story did help carry me through this one a good little ways. But then I started to use the actual clues in this text to help me figure out what might happen next in the story. And for most of the story, I knew that the pigs would build a, would ask for new materials from a new character. I knew that they would build a new house, try to make it stronger than the first one. I knew that the pig was going to come. I knew he was going to huff and puff and try to blow in the house. I knew it wasn't going to work. And then I knew that he was going to try to use something else to try to take the house down. So all of the clues throughout the story helps me to follow and understand and predict what was going to happen next. But this story did give me a pleasant surprise at the end, and I'm glad of the way it ended. And stories often do that. But remember to use the clues that you see in the story as you move along to help you predict or figure out or think what might come next. That is predicting using evidence from the text or clues from the text. So now I want you to get your own book and I want you to spend mm, about 15 minutes reading your own story. And as you do, I want you to stop along the way and ask yourself, what's happening? Is there a pattern in the book? Is there something that's happening over and over again that I see? It might give me clues as to what is going to happen next. And when you're ready, you can share that with someone at home. So get your book, find a cozy spot, and look for those clues that help carry you through the story, helping you think about what might happen next. Bye-bye. Enjoy your reading, doves. Mm-hmm.